So now it's time to install the eyes. So I thought I'd show you a little bit of what I have for eyes. I like uh, the eyes from a company called Living Eyes. That's a trademark name. And um, the company that makes them is called Fishkull. So these are absolutely wonderful eyes. Um, here is a 15 millimeter eye. They call this one ice because it's uh, black and kind of chrome, very shiny. I have these as well, which are called wind, and they're yellow. And uh, I, I choose the color of my eye based on what color the, the lure is. So the green one coming up that we're going to be doing is green. So yellow tends to go with green. So I'm going to use a yellow. And although my video showed a 15 millimeter eye socket being drilled, I'm actually going to put a, an eye on a 8 inch lure, which will take 10 millimeter eyes, these guys right here. Now, they also come in something like this, which is called fire, and they're kind of reddish. So, if you're looking for a kind of a wild look, uh, the reddish is, is great. Now, I also have some of these eyes and seven millimeter, but that's that's getting to be a pretty small lure. I don't make a lot of small lures, but just to show you what's available. Now, speaking of wild and crazy, some of my lures, which get even bigger, I, uh, I use these big guys. So this is an 18 millimeter eye, and uh, it's made by Brule Outdoors. And, and here's an even bigger one. It's uh, 20 millimeter eyes. So, you can get quite a, a variety in size. I kind of wish they had something between the 10 millimeter eyes and the 15 millimeter eyes. It, it, it seemed like um, a 13 millimeter eye would be just wonderful, however. So here's the lure that we painted in our last uh, part. And um, we're going to be putting these um, 10 millimeter eyes on there. I like the, uh, um, the ones called wind. They're a little bit yellow. Uh, they come out of the package on a small piece of plastic. Now I don't know if you can see, but those eyes aren't, the pupil is not exactly round. And say on this one here, there's a little bit of a point. It's kind of like a, a teardrop. And you want to make sure that when you, you do glue it in, that you put that teardrop forward because these are actually called predator eyes and uh, that little uh, it goes towards the front so I'm going to grab one of these guys and I'm just going to put it on on top and make sure it fits now be careful with your scalpel you don't want to scratch the paint and these have a little bit of, of um, adhesive on them which can be a little bit annoying and you put your eye on there a hard time of course okay there it is now I see that it fits which is good I don't want to press down too firmly because it'll snap into place sometimes and it won't come out so we're gonna glue this guy in I'll just take him out for the moment always always check your eye socket to make sure it fits and we're going to uh, add some crazy glue this this crazy glue is a gel and it actually takes about 20 minutes to fully set so stick this in here like so Just right, and then I'm going to use uh, the soft end of the uh, pen that I've been using in all, all of my videos and kind of push it in 
and lo and behold it did go pop. I don't know if you heard that. So now I'm going to wait 20 minutes for this to harden. I'll do the other side. I'm not going to show the other side being put in. And um, after that, um, this one is ready for its first coat of two-part epoxy. Now, one of the realities in life is that in order to make the epoxy coat come out nice and smooth, you have to put it onto a spinner. Now, I'll show you the spinner. And uh, it's, a, it's an awful looking thing made out of ugly plywood. But you know what? It does a purpose. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to balance the spinner. So if you, you can't do just one lure, uh, it'll be imbalanced. So I have a second lure that looks an awful lot like this. And um, uh, when we start putting the, uh, on the epoxy, uh, you'll see two lures that I'm going to epoxy. Normally this size of lure, I can do up to four lures. And uh, that just saves on epoxy, so it's a, it's a good idea the more lures that you can put on. The 10 inch are so heavy, like they're a pound each, I would never do, dare do more than two. So we're going into the epoxy phase of this uh, project. This is uh, one of the epoxies I like. It's called Art Resin. It's got um, uh, very low VOC, so I'm actually doing this in my house right now, and I, I never smell anything. So it, this is wonderful stuff. So what I've done, uh, based on experience, I have used a, a graduated glass, a little cup here, like you take your medicine with, and I have put in 10 cc's or 10 milliliters, same thing, of part A and part B. And one of the things you do when you add that, you, you have to make sure you scrape the, the jars, the little containers, very, very well. And um, then you stir it for a complete three minutes. And you really got to stir it. Now, what happens is while you're stirring it, you'll get bubbles starting to form. And a little later on here, after I've applied the epoxy, uh, we'll start using uh, a propane burner to uh, pop all those little bubbles. Now, after I've mixed this for three minutes, I have a timer going right now, by the way, so I'll go till that timer stops. Some of the things you do are, for example, you take your stick and you wipe it all around. Because bear in mind, you've added one part, part A first, and then you've added part B. So on the bottom of this little uh, wine glass, it's got part A all over the bottom, and you've got to kind of mix it up. So you've got to scrape that part A. There's also a dimple in the bottom, which you've got to get in and, and mix that up. And you just keep stirring. And it turns from a kind of a milky color, um, semi-opaque, to now, you can probably see it, it's turning quite clear. And then after the three minutes, we're going to let it sit for another three minutes. Now what that's going to do is a lot of these bubbles will come to the top, and then we're going to give it a little shot with the propane torch. And a lot of those bubbles, well, all of the bubbles on the top will certainly pop. And you might have a few left over. And as you apply the epoxy, um, you'll, uh, you'll sit and wait a little bit for any bubbles to kind of come up. And then you'll give the whole lure a very, very quick shot of um, propane heat. Now, one of the problems with epoxy, there's a couple problems, you got to mix it up kind of room temperature, you know, 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees centigrade. And um, 
I have found that if I'm too aggressive with the propane torch, I can get fish eyes that form. They look worrisome, but the truth is that after the second coat of epoxy, they go away. However, we would like to use that first coat of epoxy. Oh, there we go. We would like to, to, to use that first coat of epoxy to put on the, uh, the side fins and, uh, and the stripes and paint, paint the gills. Uh, if, if there's too many fish eyes, one of the things that happens is it's very difficult to put on the side fins. So we're going to wait three minutes and uh, we'll come back. So three minutes has gone by. I'm not sure if you can see the, the little bubbles in the, in the uh, container, but uh, you may be able to see this. And boom, they are gone. I've got this brush that I've cleaned out to make sure there's no little extra hairs. And although you gotta be vigilant when you're putting it on, and you, uh, it's not rocket science to put this on, but one thing to remember is while it's spinning, uh, you may get uh, build up on the, on, the, on the tip. And what I always do is I flood the eyes. Now the reason I do that is bear in mind you saw how I uh, glued the eyes in. But what happens is under that eye, there may be a little bit of um, air captured. So what what can happen is, as the uh, epoxy hardens, and this, this stuff hardens overnight, so this takes oh, as much as 10 hours sometimes, uh, you get bubbles coming out of there. And as the bubbles form, they harden with the bubble. And you come back in the morning and go, oh, I don't like that. So I'm uh, painting from the top down. Our next coat, there'll be all sorts of stuff to cover, like gills, and side fins, and um, we'll want to put on the paint on top of the gills, and we'll put on the uh, stripes. And then at the very last part of the second coat will be the sparkle. That's a separate part. Now I usually will, at the last step, I will take a little bit of epoxy off that tip. Because if you're not careful, that tip as it spins will accumulate a little bit of epoxy and you'll have a bulge on there, which certainly is not very nice. So I'm gonna go to the back side. I have two lures here. The bottom one and the top one and of course I have to do two to make sure I balance out my spinner. This uh, horrible looking <laughs> spinner is made out of rough plywood but it, it is an absolute must if you're making lures. It's got a barbecue rotisserie motor on the other side and uh, it spins for hours and once I get this thing spinning I'm going to come back in just about 15 minutes and use my um, propane torch and kind of try and pop as many bubbles as I can. Now, I do not want to use the torch too much because I will get fish eyes, so it's gonna be very brief. Once you think you've got enough epoxy on there, you're gonna to start to spin. But I'm gonna move this uh, portable light around so I can see if there's anything I've missed. Sometimes you can see some brush marks where you haven't got quite enough material, and it's important at this point to make sure it's, it's well covered. Now, there are two more coats, not a big deal, but I like to do things as good as I can every single coat.
Okay, so once you have finished off covering it, you have to get rid of some little tiny bubbles that form. And it's just that easy. I know you can't see it on the camera. But as you do that, you can see little dimples forming. And it's kind of like raindrops. And you don't want to do too much. Because uh, fish eyes are not fun. I've now taken all the bubbles out. And I'm going to put my propane torch away. And I see this one tiny little spot here. And then I get to turn on the spinner shut the door to my studio and come back probably 25 minutes just to have a little look. I'm not going to do any more uh, uh, with the blowtorch. Uh, just to make sure that there's no uh, uh, places where the uh, epoxy is accumulating. And then once that's done, it sits there for till tomorrow morning. One thing I did want to show you, I don't know if the light will show all of the Beautiful high gloss light glinting off this. This lure is just looking amazing right now. As I said, that first coat really makes it uh, sparkle.